Research, Reform, Revive. Culture Radio. For an eco humanistic, pluralistic voice on the School of Life Garden Net. Today, more dramatic news arrived from Ukraine. We learned that Russia attacked the city of Lviv, which until now has served as a kind of safe zone for Ukrainian refugees from around the country. This episode of Radio Korchak is dedicated to one of those refugees who escaped from Kiev and settled in Lviv, where he is currently trying to support the civilians who are escaping the Russian onslaught. But before we begin, I would like to rewind to December 2019, when we held the 9th International Janusz Korczak Conference at Tel Aviv University. The conference was titled, The School of Life in the 21st Century, Trends, Challenges and Initiatives in Educating for a Culture of Rights in Light of Janusz Korczak's Humanistic Thoughts. It was an extraordinary event that gathered more than 100 Korczak researchers from around the world as well as educators, pedagogues, legal experts, philosophers, and artists that contributed to the theme of the conference, which was held in celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Our guest today was one of those participants. He is the writer and educator Sergei Chiripanov, the author of 13 books, Sergei, 66 years old, is also a member of the editorial team of one of Ukraine's oldest magazines, Rainbow, which was founded in 1927. He was a reader at the Kiev University of Trade and Economy, where he earned his PhD, and is a member of the Ukrainian Korchak Society Board. Sergei has traveled to 65 countries, but alas, today he is locked in Ukraine. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sergey. First of all, where are you located? How do you feel? What can you share with us about this complex situation? Let me introduce myself. I'm Sergey Cherepanov, board member of the Ukrainian Society of Janusz Korczak, associate professor, university teacher. As well, I am a Russian writer from Kyiv the author of 13 books of poetry and prose. I was brought up in love with Russian literature, music, theater. Therefore, the war unleashed by the Russian Federation against Ukraine was a shock, caused my indignation and disgust and made me overestimate a lot. It's easy in Israel to understand what it is like for Ukraine, deprived of not only nuclear weapons, but also modern conventional weapons, to resist the totalitarian Putler's regime, in unprincipled beyond, capable of war crimes, atrocities and genocide. Putin lies lies continuously and brazenly. I, a Jew by my mother, even before the war was disgusted by the lie about Nazism in Ukraine, which at the state level did not exist all the years of our independence. Under President Poroshenko and especially under Vladimir Zelensky, also having Jewish roots, remnants anti-Semitism have been steadily 
eradicated at the everyday level as well. I would like to note that none of the nationalist parties in our country have entered Verkhovna Rada, our parliament, for the third time in a row. And the International Brotherhood in Arms has closed the issue of anti-Semitism in Ukraine. By my father, I am Russian, the son of a military officer, missile man who served at military base in the Taiga, a participant in the Caribbean crisis. I partly followed the hardships of the army life. Studying the military history and the role of the USSR and <coughs> Russian Federation in the conflict of the 20s, early 21st century, I concluded that the essence of the Soviet and post-Soviet regimes was aggressive, for which the incitement of war is a necessary element of foreign policy. But this war finally burned. Another cornerstone lie of Russian propaganda. The lie about the Russian world and the hatred to Russians in Ukraine. Seven years ago, after the start of the war in the eastern Ukraine, I organized the literary theater, which staged performances in Russian. We performed at the best venues of, in Kiev. Leading critics wrote about us. We, the Russian-speaking theater, became laureates of prestigious awards, and I have never heard reproaches, harassment, and even more so any bans. There were none, and if now they will, the reasons for this is the Kremlin tyran who destroyed the most valuable thing in the idea of the Russian world, respect to other cultures, other languages. The end of the Russian world came in Kharkov and Mariupol, Izum and Kramatorsk, where peaceful local Russians supposedly protected by Putin's situation fell under the blows of Russian shells, bombs and missiles, where Kadyrovs and Syrian mercenaries became in the instrument of their killing. What message would you like to convey to the Russians, to the world, to us in Israel? I am convinced that Putinism is Hitlerism and Stalinism of the 21st century. A regime based on total lies, violation of human rights, hatred and aggression. It should not only the condemned and by cut it, but destroyed and cursed. The task is difficult, but the world community will solve it. This process of uniting efforts is accelerating, giving birth to the new forms of struggle. And I am proud of my motherland of Ukraine, which bears the main hardships of the world. When the invasion began, I applied to the district military registration point and enlistment office in Kyiv, but they refused me, including <coughs> admission of the territory and defense of the city. Since they only admit people with combat experience under 60 years old, and I am 66. My son fits for non-combating service, the father of two minor children. His turn to fight has not yet come to. Now my whole family is in Lviv. Father, 91, mother-in-law, 84, wife, children and grandchildren. And we have only one key task. 
how to help the motherland practically. During the School of Life conference, Sergei spoke about two projects and his ongoing work with children and young adults in Ukraine. The Secret Loving Project, where an educator shares with the children his world adventures, encourages them to plan their own adventure, teaches them survival skills in an emergency, how to understand people of other cultural backgrounds, and how to solve ecological and social issues and the Think by Heart Theater project, which, following Korchak's ideas on child education, through creativity and responsibility, educate dreamers who are eager to be free in their perception and actions. Both of these projects have now been entangled in a brutal war. Korchak's ideas on child education in the background of war remind us of King Matt and Korchak himself. We all hope that the conflict will be resolved as quickly as possible, and we here at Korchak Radio are ready and willing to support in any way possible. Can you tell us about the project for refugees that your son Igor is running in Lviv? Who are the people who come and stay at the shelter? My son and daughter-in-law were lucky. My Lviv friend and partner offered to organize a shelter in the premises of his office. And two days later, they were already accepting refugees. Since the hostel is located near the train station, those who do not have the strength and clear plans, who need at least a few days to recover, get there. Turning an office place into a full-fledged place of rest is a complex task. It took a shower and a washing machine, food and medicine, a microwave, a kettle, a toaster, etc. The internet, bad food, no one is denied here. Bunk beds increased the number of places. All this requires money, and we began to raise the money all over the world. For example, my son, a rock musician and showman, organized an online char- charity concert that showed the broadest support for Ukraine in the world and raised money not only for a hostel, but also for other purposes. In the United States and Germany, with <clears throat> Our participation, charitable foundation, we organized to facilitate the supply of medical equipment for Ukrainian hospitals. Part of the money raised was donated for the purchasing drones, bulletproof vests, etc. I have been volunteering for the army since 2014. I have experience and I would be already glad if Janusz Korczak International Society joined in helping Ukraine. It seems like such a critical project. How do you seek to expand it? How can we help you? Does your project on Janusz Korczak give you any perspective on the complex situation that you are currently in? Do you think it will be possible to continue the project? And if so, in what ways? There are several directions. First, informational. Use the possibilities of the society so that the whole world knows about the atrocities of Kremlin, about the colossal scale of the tragedy 
of refugees, migrants, above the destroyed schools and hospitals, above killed and maimed children. This is the sacred duty of the Janusz Korczak International Society, whose voice must be heard on all continents, including the aggressor country. I would be very grateful to the leadership of the society for the information about what has been done and the plans of our society for the coming months. The second expert. The totalitarian regime of Russian Federation fills the country not only with systemic lies, but also with systemic maturation of children's consciousness. If we do not want Russian fascism to be internal, according to Umberto Eco's definition, the world pedagogical community and above all our society could point to those deformations, education children of sacrifice, intolerance, elitic populism, formation of the enemy image, thoughtless submission and etc., which directly contradicts Korchak's principles. A serious study is needed. Third, financial. Do not hesitate to ask for money for Ukraine where possible and as much as possible. And we will report for every shekel dollar on euro. 11 million people in Ukraine were forced to become refugees. Janusz Korczak, my idol since childhood, who took upon himself the care of the unfortunate, hungry orphans, would have understood my request. Fourth, rehabilitation. The heavy legacy of the war, wounded children's hearts and souls, requires the support of psychologists, psychiatrists, teachers. At the Lviv Hostel, we open an office for such support, but this is not enough. Tell me who contact in the society so that the required program works and a high level. Fifth, creative. We need projects that unite the world around Janusz Korczak's idea of children's self-government. We see how the environmental movement is getting younger. The queue of social projects in which adolescents could play a more active role. While the Russian Federation is striving for Turkey, such projects would leave and clearance the informational space of the empire. Together with filmmakers from the United States, we have started creating the film Ukraine 2022 – Humans and Animals Against the Beasts, which has a clear humanistic and anti-war orientation. We would be happy to offer the society any form of cooperation in this area. Thank you for your help. Humanism will win. Thank you, Sergei, for your moving words and extraordinary efforts in such a tragic situation. And thank you, listeners, for joining us. If you would like to support Sergei and his son's efforts to provide shelter, food, clothing, and other support to Ukrainian refugees, you may contact Sergei as follows. Research, reform, revive. Korchak Radio. For an eco-humanistic, pluralistic voice on the School of Life Garden Net.